Well, welcome everyone. My name is Julie Garden Robinson and I'm a food and nutrition specialist on campus at NDSU. And this is the first of 11 Wednesday weekly webinars and we certainly hope that you join us on most or all of those. Each week we'll have a different sign in. So watch for an email every week. Um, you won't use the same link that you received this week. And invite your friends as well to join us. Anyone can be part of this anywhere in the world, really. So Tom, if you'll move on to the next slide. Okay. Um, I just wanted to remind you of some upcoming webinars. On February 21st, we'll hear about a snapshot of NDSU's High Tunnel Research Project with Kyla Splickle. And February 28th, we'll hear about GMOs, separating fact from emotion. And that's with Esther McGinnis. Next slide. Uh, I think you've discovered a lot of the controls that we have available. So you can click around. Tom is going to put us all in mute. But um, you will all have the option to talk if you want. And to do that, you just unmute yourself by clicking on the microphone button. There's also a chat box. And so, you know, feel free to work around it. This is our first time trying this system, Zoom, with our Wednesday weekly webinar. So we're going to be learning right along with you. Next slide. Here we go. And I have a couple more things to say before I introduce Tom. And one is I, I encourage you, please, take the little survey that will be emailed to you at the address that you provided. It will take you just two or three minutes. And this whole project that we've been doing is made part by a grant through the North Dakota Department of Agriculture. So please take that little survey. Let us know what topics you want to know about in the future and what you learned today. And I really take that information uh, seriously. And in the next round that we do this next year or maybe next fall, you might see those topics that you suggested. And if any of your friends wanted to attend and were not able to, we will archive all of these Zoom webinars. And with that, I'm going to introduce Tom Kelb, our first presenter, and I thank him a lot for being our guinea pig because we haven't used Zoom before, and he's been a real good sport about learning how to use it right along with me. And today, Tom is going to talk about great seeds and where to buy them. Thanks, Julie, and yeah, it is. thank you for inviting me to speak at this webinar series, and you're right, it's, it's going to be a learning experience for all of us with this Zoom. I'm going to mute everybody now, but if you, if you have something that you'd want to share at any time, just unmute yourself and go ahead. We like to, I like to have informal, fun presentations, and, uh, but I have to mute you because sometimes you know, like the kids come in the room or the husband wants another sandwich or something and we don't all need to hear that. So there you go. Okay, got to tell you today what a great day it is. Here it is, sunny in the 40s in Bismarck. So, and it's, it's warm everywhere in North Dakota today. Haven't been able to say that for a long time. And spring is definitely here. So when you think about the first sign of spring, what kind of images come to your mind? Just think about that first. I think for a lot of people, it's going to be the sign of the first robin that they see. Then they know that spring is coming. But for me, the first sign of spring for me is when I go out to my mailbox and I get seed catalogs. I love seed catalogs. I've loved them ever since I was a little kid. I didn't read comic books when I was a kid. I read seed catalogs. They were so colorful and bright, and I was so excited to find out about all the, all the new varieties that are coming out. And I could always start, start dreaming about what a great garden we're going to have. <clears throat> so I love seed catalogs. And so let's start talking about how you can get some seed catalogs and enjoy that same experience. <clears throat> Here's a handout that's going to be, if you don't have it already, it's going to be available to you on the Field of Fork website. It's a two-page handout about recommended vegetable cultivars for North Dakota. On the second page, 
I have a list of seed sources, and these are some of the most popular seed companies that offer free catalogs. And so, like, you know, one of these nights when you got nothing else to do, you can just go to that back page of the handout and you can start typing in and requesting for free seed catalogs, and then your mailbox will be full of seed catalogs. Even some seed companies you never even heard about, you're going to get some seed catalogs. And you can start dreaming along with me about all the great things that's going to happen this summer. It's going to be a great summer. I'm really I'm optimistic this year. Now, one thing is we, let's talk about some seed company and their catalogs. And I, when I start talking about this, I want to be sure that you know that, um, excuse me, that I'm not discriminating against any seed company. And just because I talk about them doesn't mean I'm endorsing them. And just because I don't mention them doesn't mean they're not great. I just have a little bit of time. And I just want to tell you a few of my favorites. And if I could ask you to get one seed catalog, if you don't have it already, I would recommend that you get the seed catalog from Johnny's Selected Seeds from Maine. And of course, I always like getting my seed catalogs from Northern Seed Companies because they're going to offer varieties that do well in the North. The reason why I like the Johnny's catalog the most is because, not just because of the seeds, and they have good quality seeds and great customer service, but I just find it to be an outstanding gardening resource. You'll see that for every, every type of plant, in this case we show carrots, they have helpful information. You know, Johnny's wants you to be successful in your garden this summer. So I'll talk about the type of soil that's best for this. They'll tell you how to space out the seeds. They'll give you some warnings about these are the common diseases that you have to look out for. Here's a common insect pest you have to look out for. So I just, I always keep this, I always keep this in my car actually, or I always keep it on my desk in the office because uh, it's such a great resource full of quality information. You know, and they have good tools. And here's some information about uh, fungicides and insecticides. And I, and I value their information. They're, they're strong in organic agriculture. I'm not, I'm not necessarily an organic. I'm more of a conventional gardener. But I appreciate the information and the recommendations that they have. So I just think it's a great seed catalog. Really encourage. And it's free. What else do you want, man? Okay, what's another good one? I think Jung... Seeds uh, is a great seed company from the Midwest. I value, I, I valued for decades the seeds and the plants they offer. I used to live in Wisconsin and that's where they're headquartered. And I remember taking a, a, my magical pilgrimage every year up there to Randolph, Wisconsin and just be overwhelmed by all the plants and the quality seeds that they offer. The varieties they offer have done well in our variety trials in North Dakota. Have a lot of respect for Jung and the Jung family. I know some of you are commercial growers, okay? And if you're a commercial grower, you buy seed in bulk. And you may not know about this company, but I invite you to get to know about Jordan Seeds out of the Twin Cities. They have quality seeds, amazing selection, and amazing prices. Jordan Seeds for great prices on bulk seeds. Another company that's targeted, well, primarily for commercial growers is Harris Seed Company out of New York. They, uh, they have an outstanding vegetable and cut flower selection. I, they're unsurpassed for their disease resistant pumpkins, amazing selection of sweet corn, and a lot of good varieties that do well here in North Dakota. That's Harris Seeds. If you're not a bulk grower, but you just you want a great selection of quality cultivars at an affordable price, I would encourage you to get the pine tree catalog. And I know I, I'm a bulk grower. I grow a lot of stuff. So I don't I haven't used this myself, but a lot of gardeners have told me how much they value this company. And most importantly, because the prices are so affordable. Because you can you can get a seed packet for two bucks here at Pine Tree and they have quality varieties. So that'd be that'd be one that's definitely worth requesting that catalog if you're a gardener more so than a, a commercial grower. A lot of people in North Dakota, they don't know about Fedco seeds. Again, that's out east in the north, northeastern United States. 
they have a great selection of untreated seeds, especially, and uh, they have some organic and heirloom types that, again, this is a catalog that's worth requesting. They also have a lot of potatoes. If you're into potatoes, their moose tubers are outstanding. Their moose tuber company. Okay, with regards to heirlooms, it's really hard to beat Seed Savers Exchange. Um, I'm not a big fan about heirlooms. I, I generally, I think there's a reason why heirlooms have become heirlooms, and that's because we've moved on and we've advanced. Um, nevertheless, there are some wonderful stories and wonderful flavors in some heirloom vegetables. Um, you can, you can sign up in the Seed Savers Exchange and get access to literally thousands and thousands of varieties that have been grown for centuries in the United States. Just an amazing company out of Iowa and an enjoyable seed catalog. And another heirloom seed catalog that I really like is Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. That's, this is like a I, it's almost like a coffee table book. It's got so many beautiful pictures of so many unusual vegetables and flowers, things I've never seen before. Um, have to be a little bit careful. It's not you know, necessarily targeted for northern growers, but just a lot of great stories here and a lot of, of beautiful information, some, some that you may want to investigate. Okay, so that's those are some of my – let me just share an example of why I like heirlooms. And one is like the Arikra yellow beans. Again, I'm not a big fan of heirlooms. They're generally not that productive and they're not as reliable as modern varieties, but they do have special flavors. And here's an example of one from North Dakota, the Arikra yellow dry bean that we've tested in our variety trials and it's done quite well. Um, the Arikra yellow bean has been grown by the, the Native Americans in North um, in uh, in, the North, in central North Dakota for centuries. And the variety was obtained by a famous seeds person in Bismarck about 1915 and made available. But this is the same Arikara yellow bean that was shared by the Native Americans with Lewis and Clark on their famous uh, trek. And then Lewis and Clark subsequently shared this exact same bean with Thomas Jefferson, who enjoyed this in Monticello. So just imagine, you know, you can grow the same bean that's been grown by North Dakotans for centuries, as well as enjoyed by Lewis and Clark and Thomas Jefferson, like often called America's first horticulturist. So just an amazing experience that you can have with some heirloom vegetables. Okay. Okay, those are my ideas. Just a quick run through about some... Uh, some of my favorite seed catalogs. How about does anybody out there have any any seed catalog that they would like that they think is especially great that other people should get to know about in our group here? And you can chat. You can you, you can territorial seeds. Thank you for that comment in the chat box. You can you can type in the chat box or you can unmute yourself if you have something to say. Uh, territorial seeds have many, actually many of the same uh, varieties that Johnny Selected Seeds has, but I, or, I always order from Territorial as well. They have uh, both untreated and treated seed. Anybody else out there have any seed catalogs that, they, that people should definitely request before the spring really arrives? And you have to excuse me, I'm fighting a cold here today. Okay, well... I'm going to just move ahead then, but thank you for that one suggestion. You know, the one drawback about seed catalogs is that when you read a seed catalog, everything sounds good. Everything. So how do you know what's really best for you? And especially for us in North Dakota, because, you know, if you really haven't noticed, we have like a special weather here in North Dakota, you know, like a brutal, frigid, uh, we got a very short season, gen usually a cool summer, and semi-arid. It's dry. This is one of the harshest places in America, if not Earth, to live on. And uh, so how do you know what grows best here? And that's why we started the North Dakota Home Garden Variety Trials, in which I work with a group of over 200 families every year to evaluate promising 
vegetable, herb, and flower varieties. And you can see our website there. And you can Google it if you want to just do a North Dakota garden variety trials. You can find it. Or again, it'll be on the handouts that will be posted on the Field to Fork website. Right now, we are, uh, we're, getting, we're making our final preparations for 2018, and we're getting our seed catalog out by the end of this month. If you would like to receive our spring 2018 catalog, uh, you are more than welcome. We have, again, over 200 families participate every year. Last year, we had 294 families across North Dakota. Even though we got a few Minnesotans in there and a few South Dakotans, that's okay. And um, But we, we love to get a bit, as big a team as we can to get information, to share information among ourselves as far as what's the best varieties for North Dakota. Because I think, you know, it literally makes sense that what's the best way to identify the best varieties for North Dakota, for North Dakota gardeners, is to grow, test the varieties in North Dakota under the management of North Dakota gardeners. And it works. Just to give you a brief overlook at the program, like here's a program of the early Nantes carrot, carrot trial. And every, you get a participant. We do about 50 different trials you can choose from, all kinds of vegetables, all kinds of flowers and herbs. And if you want to participate in a trial, like here's the carrot trial, we'll give you two varieties to compare side by side. And you'll grow a 10-foot roll of each, and we'll give you an official 10-foot string because it's very high-tech research here. And you grow them, and we're giving you a label so you don't forget which one was which. And then you take data on that. And it's very, we've, over, we've made it simpler and simpler every year. And we got to the point where I think we got the system down perfectly in which we just asked which of the two variety germinated better, which was healthier, which was uh, ready to harvest earlier, which one was more productive, which one tasted better. And then we ask you, which, which of these do you prefer? Which of these two you prefer? And then which of these two do you recommend? Do you recommend both of them for other gardeners in North Dakota? Or do you recommend, maybe they're both terrible. So you say, forget about it. I don't want, I don't want either one of them. But we take, uh, we'll get over 30 gardeners every year. We'll do this carrot trial. And from that, we'll publish uh, results. And um, actually, we, this year we have a 140-page document of results in which this year we had over 1,000 side-by-side comparisons of successful research. 1,000, over 1,000 trials were successfully submitted by gardeners. And we've put that data in the results. We have a, like a 10-page summary, if 140 pages is too much for you. And then also, from that, we develop our list of recommended cultivars. And so like the cultivars that we're gonna be talking about this afternoon aren't really necessarily the ones that, that I recommend, but, not, but they are the ones that the gardeners in North Dakota as a group has said work very well. So, and the program itself, we did an evaluation of this program a couple of months ago, and we had about, out of the 250 online participants, we submitted, we had an online survey, and we had about 67% of people complete the evaluation. So we've got a very positive, strong team. That's a great, uh, that's a great response rate. And all the gardeners recommended the program. Every one of them recommended this program for other gardeners. It's really a fun and powerful program. Almost everybody was introduced to new varieties. And by being introduced to new varieties, it led to higher yields and more vegetables in the diet. Even 91% of the people said that in the future, they're going to grow their garden differently. And in most cases, that means they're going to be more open to trying new varieties. So again, this program is open to everybody. It's open, we like even children to get involved. It's like a simple scientific project for kids. So the more participation, the stronger our results will be. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna break over 300 farmer uh, growers this year. When we talk about what are good varieties, these are some of the qualities that I look for. We want something that's early maturing, 
because North Dakota has a short growing season. If it doesn't make it in a hundred, if it doesn't mature in a hundred days, it might not make it in North Dakota, especially in the northern part of the state. When we grow varieties on the farm or in the garden, we want them to be especially flavorful. We want them to resist diseases, so we have to, so we don't have to be spraying toxic chemicals in our garden if we can avoid it. We want the, the variety, we want our garden to be productive, and the variety has to be widely adapted. Again, we have a very harsh climate here in North Dakota, so we have to find the right varieties that can adapt to our situation. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just feature a few of the most, um, the strongest performers and also some special new varieties this year to highlight. And again, this will also be in the handout that will be on the Field to Fork website if, if you haven't already had it. Let's start with beans. This is always one of our popular trials and there's all kinds of beans out there, green beans, yellow beans, and purple beans. Um, the standard green bean that's done well in our trials is Bush Blue Lake 274. That's Bush Blue Lake 274. It's reliable and dependable. Uh, our gardeners like it, but I have to say in general, gardeners are not that enthusiastic about their beans compared to other vegetables they trial. Here's a, here's a variety that we're very excited about trying this year, a new variety called Greenfield. And if you see it with that logo in the top right, it's from the Vermont Bean Seed Company. And over the years, we have learned to respect the judgment of Vermont Bean Seed Company in the beans that they award their variety of the year. And we've been, we've been testing their varieties of the year for the last few years, and they have excelled here in North Dakota. Like last year, we tried the variety Inspiration, and, and that, that strongly outperformed Bush Blue Lake 274. This year, their, their uh, variety of the year is Greenfield. That's their new variety that they, they want us to test. And it, you can see the, the long, slender, high quality beans. We're pretty excited about testing Greenfield this year. If I could just give you one vegetable that I would encourage you to try if you haven't before, is try some filleted beans. Over the years, you know, we have many gardeners repeat our trials year after year. And every year we have more and more people trying filet beans and fewer and fewer people trying the standard green beans. The varieties Crockett and Serengeti, these are amazing beans. The beans are super productive. They are of the highest quality, slender, smooth, crisp, long, straight. These, when, you, when you read the results of these gar the gardeners who test those beans, they go, they say, wow, I've never grown a bean this great before. I'm going to grow filet beans in the future from now on. Um, I love these beans. When you read those kind of comments, you know you're on to something. So again, tr try the filet beans, you know, and Crockett and Serengeti. Every year I've seen more seed catalogs offer those varieties. And we'll be, we'll be testing them again this year. As far as carrots go, there's a look at it, nice orange carrots. And the Nantes carrots that I've circled here, that's the most common one for home gardeners. We don't have, we, it's hard to grow the long ones that you see at the grocery stores. That's, that's more for like a, a very sandy soil or a, a, a deep peat soil. But most of our soils in North Dakota have a, more of a clay content. And so the Nantes type do very well. And the varieties Goldfinger and Nelson do really good in our in our trials. Actually, Nelson is is becoming harder to come now. Uh, the commercial seed company is stopping production. So one of our challenges this year is to find an alternate to Nelson. Also, if you look at the at the on the right side, the Chantenay carrots. These are ones that are especially good for processing. Like if you're going to make carrot juice, or these are especially flavorful and Hercules and New Corotta are outstanding in North Dakota. Here's a look at some Nantes carrots, just some standard carrots that we can grow in gardens in North Dakota. And I have a question from Kimberly, what would we recommend for a sandy soil? The thing about a sandy soil, you have options there. If it's a deep sandy soil and you want a, a longer carrot, you have the option of getting an imperator type. And maybe that, maybe you could, delve into maybe something like a candy snacks or a sugar snacks type. 
for that. But really, you can't go wrong with that gold finger, I have to say. And uh, we're also excited about the variety Napoli, a sugar carrot this year that we think might replace Nelson in our recommendations. Carrots is one of our most popular trials. There's all kinds of colors of carrots out there. And we've tested purple, white, and yellow ones, and, and red ones. And generally, these more nutritious types, uh, they, they taste kind of bitter. And so I really, there are, uh, you, can, you can try, I like exploring, but I just warn you a little bit that just because they say they're more nutritious doesn't mean you're going to want to eat them. So I kind of think like maybe you're better off just getting a, a vegetable that's delicious and you're more likely to eat more of them. So be a little bit wary about those, those red carrots and purple carrots can be a little bitter. If you buy carrot seed, I really want to introduce you to getting pelleted seed and the finer seed companies will offer pelleted carrot seed. It's so, it's so frustrating with carrots when you sow a row of carrots and you're just kind of scattering the seed down the row that it's almost impossible to get a perfectly uniform stand and it makes thinning out the carrots so frustrating. So in our trials, we always use, if available, pelleted carrot seed because you just you can just put them in carrot seed by carrot seed in perfect spacing and uh, it makes life so easier so take advantage of pelleted seed if you can find it we do that for carrot and lettuce seeds in our trials i'd like to talk uh about corn here a little bit and corn wow what a great revolution of corn that's been going on over the last few decades and i remember when i was a kid Growing up in Minnesota, where where uh, we'd have about 10, 15 acres of sweet corn every year, and I remember picking that sweet corn at night, preferably loading up the truck, then driving down to Minneapolis early the next morning. And I always remember that when I brought in that truck to the market, I knew that I had to sell every ear on that truck that morning because the corn of the past, the sweet corn of the past, wouldn't be sweet the next day, and so I'd have to go to the cows. So we had some great bargains at the, towards the end of the hours around noontime, I'll tell you that. But nowadays, there's, there's all kinds of uh, more sugary corns, there's, and there's different types, super sweet and the sugary enhanced and the synergistic. There's super seedware. There's all kinds of sh more sugary types that can be three times sweeter and hold on to the sweetness for several days. The big drawback with super sweet corns is that the kernel was, is so full of sugar and not starch that the seed itself, the kernel itself, when it, when it dries down, it, there's almost nothing there. It's a shrunken kernel. And so that gives us poor germination or at least weak germination. So you have to wait later in the year to sow the seed and, and that slows down the harvest. And we want to have that corn on the market fast. There's been some great work done in recent years about finding corn varieties, super sweet types, that can germinate in cold soil. And so when I look for a, a sweet corn nowadays, I look for something that germinates well in cold soil. The other thing about sweet corn seed that we found in our trials is although in, we prefer generally to go with untreated seed because we have so many kids and families in our trials, but for corn, we're more and more just offering treated fungicide treated seeds because it really makes a big difference in getting a good stand of corn so you know consider the use of fungicide treated seed for corn especially this is the variety that's that's generating a lot of excitement this year it's an all america winner it's on a lot of covers of seed catalogs called american dream and it's supposed to be the the finest taste experience available for sweet corn. So we got to test this one. It's, it looks especially promising and we just got to see if all that hype is true. But this is a, a super sweet type that's supposedly easy to grow and has unbelievable flavor to it. American dream, you might want to consider growing that this year or joining our trials. For cucumbers, I think we're at the point now where I really don't understand why anybody would have a, a traditional straight eight or slicing cucumber nowadays because the burpless types are so much better. They're earlier, 
they're more productive, they're bitter free, burbless, they're smooth skinned, thin skinned, small seated, they're just perfect. They got everything going for them. And, uh, and they're more disease resistant. I really encourage you, if you haven't tried a burpless cucumber, that you try it. And our, it's, I just, again, this I see this with our trials is that we'll get 40 people try burpless types and maybe 10 will try a, a traditional slicer. Because once you try a burpless, you won't go back. And a variety that I can strongly endorse over the last couple of years has been Summer Dance. Just uh, amazing quality and very productive, about like 10 inch long cucumbers super quality with summer dance lettuce you know here's an old variety like butter crunch lettuce that always does well in our trials and the one thing about lettuce is lettuce likes it cool okay so when we look for good varieties of lettuce one of our priorities is to find varieties that can take the heat okay because that will extend our harvest butter crunch can take the heat and it's very reliable so this is widely available. You can find it at any garden center. It's, it's, a, it's a solid lettuce. Lettuce likes it cool, but melons like it hot. And that doesn't, and doesn't always cooperate here in North Dakota. And I know like whenever I give out a melon trial, about a third of the times the variety will be a flop that the gardener will report. I didn't get one single ripe melon. So, but here's a, here's a very reliable watermelon for North Dakota called Sweet Dakota Rose. It was developed in North Dakota. It's one of our own and it thrives in North Dakota. It does very well and the quality is outstanding. Last year, we compared Sweet Dakota Rose with Sangria. And Sangria is, is widely known as one of the finest quality with the dark red flesh to it. It's a little bit later than others. So we just, you know, like our goal in uh, these, these programs is to find the finest quality for gardeners. So this sangria, let's try it. And we tried it. And it, and most of our gardeners preferred it over Sweet Dakota Rose. That's the first time we found any watermelon that, that was, that gardeners like better than Sweet Dakota Rose. So I just, I want to encourage you that, um, might want to give sangria a try in that. Sangria is kind of a weird name for a uh, watermelon, but then I found out about one of its common uses, and that is to make alcoholic drinks out of it. And uh, if you, you know, if you haven't had watermelon juice, I just think you have to try it. It's really amazing. It really cools you off. Some, and if you want to have a, a special experience, I guess you can throw some te tequila or white wine in it, put some fruits in there and enjoy the sangria experience. But uh, you can try these watermelons. Let me just get the question here about, uh, I said a comment about uh, about the burpless cucumbers not for fermenting pickles. So if you're interested, if we're talking about making pickles, that's I, there's a lot of people in our state who like to do that. And we found a great variety that's called homemade pickles homemade pickles is the name of the variety and it wins the our, we do a pickling cucumber trial every year and we test homemade pickles against a popular variety a promising variety and homemade pickles wins the contest every year so it has a, a high quality blunt shape and a crisp texture that's perfect for pickling so yeah don't use burpless cucumbers for pickling Use that variety, homemade pickles, and you can't go wrong. And I welcome any more comments that people have. Just throw them in the chat box, and I'm happy to, to, uh, to chat about it with you. Okay. We're going to move on to peas now, another popular crop. And, and you know, I encourage gardeners to, to, to share with us the, their favorite varieties. And I remember once when I was giving a talk, a lady came up and she says, you know, have you ever tried Lincoln pea? And I, I hadn't. I kind of thought, well, it's kind of an old pea. It's probably not that great. But she says, you got to try it. Yeah. And um, so we did. We did the next year. 
And this has been like five years running now. And every year, Lincoln P wins their side-by-side -side trials. Every year. Lincoln is the best P for gardeners in North Dakota. It's just nothing else comes close to beating Lincoln P. It's just uh, high yielding, extended harvest, easy to shell, and freezes well. So if you haven't tried Lincoln P, you might want to give it a try. It's a winner. The only drawback about Lincoln P is you have to shell it. And I don't know how you feel about that, but I, like as a kid, I never understood peas because I'd spend every 4th of July shelling peas. We'd sit on the kitchen floor, my brothers and sisters and I, and we'd spend the whole day shelling peas. The peas always seemed ripen on the 4th of July. You get all these bushels of peas, and by the time you shell them, you get like a bowl of peas, and then all these shells that you feed to the cows. Just made no sense to me. And also, I always never couldn't see the fireworks. So that's why I like snap peas, because you don't have to shell them, and you can enjoy the fireworks. Sugar Ann has always done very well in our variety trials in North Dakota. And both Lincoln and Sugar Ann do not have to be trellised, which is a nice convenience thing to not have to trellis your peas. We tried sugar magnolia last year, snap pea, and it was the it was the highlight of spring. Gardeners were raving about it. The beautiful pinkish purple flowers and the purple pods. Just so beautiful. But then the problem was people started to eat them. And then when they eat them, they go, wow, this tastes terrible. These are like, it's like eating wood. So that's a nice thing about our variety trials is that we not only get the yield information, but we also get the preferences of the, the taste preferences of gardeners. And so we can't recommend sugar magnolia as a snap pea because it tastes terrible. It may look beautiful, but if you got to eat them, forget it. I got to say, Laura, I love your comment in chat box about the only reason to grow peas is so you can snack them snack on them in the garden and I just think that's right everybody I always I, I always have at least one row of peas just so I can eat them with my kids in the garden right there in the garden um, so that is that is a true joy of enjoying the sweetness of the peas in the garden but I, I, I'm so with you on that one Laura and Kathy okay let's let's just keep moving I'm just gonna keep moving through a few more vegetables of our, of our featured varieties. One is uh, about peppers, and peppers can be a little bit hit or miss in North Dakota, but this one is always a hit. This is Carmen pepper. It's a frying pepper, an Italian bullhorn type, with outstanding taste and very productive. I've never seen a variety trial test in North Dakota where Carmen didn't come out on top. It's outstanding pepper not the true bell it's not bell pepper though it's not for stuffing it's more for slicing and, and uh, frying potatoes um this is a staple in, in our gardens and a lot of people grow the red norland or also the the yukon gold or yukon gem type today i just want to highlight a, another variety here for you to explore and that's being purple viking this was a very uh highly rated potato in our trials First of all, because it's so beautiful. Look at that, that marbled purple skin. Just spectacular. And the, look at that flesh. Snow white, just perfect white. Great for baking, great for mashed potatoes. And I noticed that purple Viking, the seeds always, it's always one of the first varieties where the seed stores run out of online. So if you, I encourage you to try purple Viking. It's a fun, you know, I love growing potatoes with kids because I just tell them, like, it's like going out there, like, we're, we're going to be like potato pirates. Let's go out and dig some buried treasure and find some jewels. So here's some sapphires that we can dig or some amethyst gems that we can dig out of the garden or some rubies or gold. And kids just love that. And if kids grow stuff in the garden, they're more likely to eat it. And that's always a challenge. Try Purple Viking. You're going to love it. Here's two of my kids, by the way, as far as they're with the, 
the most reliable pumpkin for North Dakota. It's called Neon. And the reason why it's so reliable is it ripens. It doesn't, it never turns orange. It starts orange. And then it just grows like an uh, orange balloon. So you see it orange all summer and you just harvest it when you want to. You know, it's, 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 it's ready in about uh, two weeks before normal. So it's always ready in September, no matter what the frost, you can have a Halloween pumpkin. And it's so good. Ruth has a question about purple Viking. It's, it resists scab. That's another nice thing about purple Viking potato. It has, which scab is the number one problem for diseases in North Dakota for potatoes. But so thank you for that question. As far as the neon pumpkin goes. Here. Okay, we're having some problems here. I'm gonna give everybody. Here we go. Now we're in good shape. Okay, as far as that neon pump goes, it's 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 always it's two or three weeks ready for any other pumpkin. But it's a little bit small. But it's still it's fun for little kids. If you want a bigger pumpkin, may I encourage you to grow big moose. This is a this is a big pumpkin. Uh, it doesn't get it's not gigantic. It's not gonna be like you know. 300 pounds that you're going to get the tractor to get get them get the pumpkin out but you don't want the baby either. like like those people grow the giant pumpkins you have to like feed it all the time water it all the time put a blanket on top of it to keep the skin moist and shaded you know big moose you just plant the seeds and you come back and fall and you got 50 pound up to a over 100 pound pumpkins and reliable fast it's it's really an easy Easy, easy one to grow. Big moose, it's done very well in our trials. And Diane, okay, let's go to the chat box here. Diane wants to know about where to get sweet potato starts. Uh, that's a good question. There are some seed companies that offer the starting plants. Um, I know a grower in Bismarck who starts his own plants, actually. You can start your own plants just by you can start your own sprouts and plant them that way, but there are uh, there are there are plants you can, you can buy the slips from. You can just go online and get sweet potato slips, and the variety Beauregard is generally regarded one of the best, one of the earliest ones for North Dakota. One of the drawbacks about sweet potatoes though is they really demand a hot growing season, and so don't in most you have to really have some low expectations don't expect you're gonna have these a bunch of gorgeous gorgeous roots but so, some people can make it can make it work but it, it, it can be a little bit difficult okay keep those questions coming i love them um, let's move on to beyond the pumpkins though spinach <clears throat> in when you sow spinach in spring the biggest drawback is we have to make sure that it it doesn't go to seed. It has to take the heat. And our gardeners last year really liked space. We tried space last year, and it's our new it's our new top spinach for spring. Gardeners in our trials generally like the smooth no, leaf types, easy to grow, and space can tolerate space can tolerate the heat. So I encourage you to try space in the springtime. Okay, just a few more to go here. One is uh, summer squash, and my goodness, you know, thinking about summer squash, people ask for a recommend, recommendation of a summer squash, a zucchini, for example. And in most cases, almost any zucchini you plant is going to give you more than you want. So I would encourage you to focus more on quality and not quantity. And actually, the yellow straight necks, if you really want production, yellow straight necks will outproduce zucchinis even. But this variety Zephyr, which has the green ends on it, this is a strong performer in our trials because of the quality of the summer squash. So you get good yields and a unique quality that you can't get at the farmer's market or at the grocery store. So I encourage you to try Zephyr straight neck squash. For winter squash, you know, you may, a lot of people who love winter squash, They'll tell you that the buttercup is the finest of all winter squashes as far as flavor. And we can be proud of North Dakota that the buttercup squash 
started here at North Dakota in about 1930. We released it. The top variety is Burgess. It's early and will have amazing taste quality for you. And it's from North Dakota. It's really a winner. Let's just wind up with tomatoes here and then we'll get to some questions. A lot of people want to know what's the best tomato. This is really subjective. Again, I have to say that I'm not a big fan of heirlooms, and that includes heirloom tomatoes. Heirloom tomatoes are generally unreliable. They're, they're not as productive. They're more difficult to grow. They, they lack disease resistance in most cases. So you have to space them all far apart in the garden so they get great air movement, and you got to make sure you keep the leaves dry because otherwise they'll get diseased. In most heirlooms, not all, but most, you have to trellis them and you have to prune them. It's a lot of work. And at the end, yields are low. There are exceptions, but also, you know, there's also great flavors in heirlooms. But I would just say with heirlooms, you know, have some realistic expectations with heirlooms. That said, probably the two most reliable varieties in North Dakota would be Celebrity and Mountain Fresh Plus, fresh market types. Well, about an eight ounce tomatoes. Here's some of the popular varieties. Early girl is, uh, is popular because it's so early and there's bush early girl if you like a, even a tighter plant that's easier to keep, take care of. Celebrity is very reliable. Big beef is a great quality, uh, flavorful, large tomato for the, for the upper Midwest. Here's Mountain Fresh Plots, very popular. It's a fresh market type. I'm not really crazy about any of the cherries that are popular that you see at Garden Center, but Super Sweet 100 is, is pretty popular. It does have cracking issues if we get rain, though. And Roma is, is probably the easiest to grow of all tomatoes. I have a question here about from Kathy. You're in Minnesota, Zone 4B, and... and uh, Actually, almost all of or the bottom two-thirds of North Dakota, the southern two-thirds of North Dakota is zone four. So all these recommended seed varieties will transfer to your zone, everything. Here's a picture of Roma tomato. It's a determinant type. And so that's one thing I look for. It's not necessarily that, like, you've got to pay attention to the fruit. Like, do I want to process it or do I want to eat it fresh? Do I want to eat it as a snack tomato? But also look at the vine. Personally, I like determinant vines because they're so easy to take care of. A determinant vine, the vine will terminate when the flowers start appearing. So it's a compact plant, doesn't get unwieldy. You don't have to prune it. You don't even have to trellis it if you don't want to, but it fits nicely in a cage or on a single stake. And determinant types focus their attention on fruit production, so they're generally early, and that's critical for North Dakota. Indeterminate types, the vines grow, keep growing forever. And so they have to be pruned, they have to be trellised. The fruits uh, can be larger, and because the vines keep growing, they're, they're always fresh tissue producing sugars for the fruit. So it has some very flavorful fruit. But I personally think indeterminates are more suited towards the warmer places of the United States that have a longer growing season. Here, I just want to get some tomatoes before the frost comes. So I like the de determinant types. I want to thank the, uh, the people who took the photos for this presentation. And then I want to wish you all a happy spring. Does anybody have any questions that I, or comments that they would like to share with the group this, this afternoon? Oh, this is Julie, and I'd like to thank you for hosting our very first webinar of the spring, and we're going to call it spring today. That's right. It's <laughs> thank above you. freezing. And thank just a, a couple notes for everybody. Um, we just posted the, the handouts, and you also will be able to download, as soon as we get it posted, a certificate of attendance. And I certainly encourage you to join us again next week. And we're going to keep doing these until April 25th is our last one. Please fill out the survey and have a good rest of your week. 
Thank you, Julie, and thank you to everybody. Um, we have a few minutes here. I see Annie has a question. When's the garden trial information when it's going to be available? Our 2018 information we expect to be out sometime next week. We're, we're getting that arranged, but you can go to the website. It's on the handout there. Or again, you can Google garden variety trials and sign up to get the catalog, and I'll be happy to email it to you. Or And also, I'll, I'll, if you're at any of these gardening symposia across the state of North Dakota, maybe I'll see you and I'll be happy to talk to you about the trials there. So everyone's welcome to participate. It's a, it's a fun experience. And you're also, you're doing a service to gardeners across the state. That's, it's very valuable. Does anybody have any questions or comments? I have a question from Laura. Yes, we will have some free seeds available at the, at the Dakota Garden Expo, April 20 and 21 at the Bismarck Event Center. Okay, I think. I think we're, we're done. Good. So you can end the recording, Tom. Yeah.